Well, hi everyone, welcome back to the podcast. Today I have a very special guest. I have Miss Naomi, now teaching in Bangkok. Hi Miss Naomi, how are you? Hi Esther, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. So um, we have a few questions for you today. And we were just wondering before I ask you, you know, the questions, how have you been doing and what are some of your new hobbies during quarantine? Maybe you can share a bit of that. Yeah, so um, the lockdown started when I was just going on my summer break. So I, I was planning to work on some other stuff, but I don't work very good at home. So I tried to have some patience with myself and just use that time to create. So um, I'm kind of into knitting. So I got some knitting projects done and I ordered some paint by numbers. <laughs> so, so, you know, just creative things like got my watercolors out and stuff. So tried to do as much of that stuff that I don't usually or always make time for. So that's what I did during COVID and you know, I also, it was nice to walk around the city because there wasn't a lot of people out. So I could just wander the streets and get to see parts of Bangkok that I usually don't because of just busyness or too many people. So that's what I did. You have like a few samples of your knitting that you would like to share with us? Um... <laughs> I'm not a professional by any means, but this is one, I don't know, it's yarn that my friend in Nebraska dyed, and it's super soft, but, um, so that's one of them. The rest I have packed up to send to people, so, oh, you're yeah, just kind oh, of, so cool. yeah, yeah, I, because I'm a beginner, I just do a lot of shoals because it's easy. <laughs> so I haven't ventured to socks or anything yet. Just easy triangles. So that's nice. Yeah, it was a good challenge. So um, what do you think, like how, I know that we've been in lockdown for quite a while now. How do you think the situation will be moving forward? Oh. I don't know. I think Bangkok, Thailand did a really good job shutting everything down, like not letting people in. Um, they had curfews, which I don't mind because I don't stay out late. They, you know, you couldn't buy alcohol for a while because they're just really trying to cut down on people gathering. And so um, we're right now into stage five, which is ahead of a lot of places. Um, especially the U.S. where I'm from. So that's been frustrating to see what's happening there because I want to go home and visit and I don't know when I'll get to do that, you know, because then I also have to think like, can I come back into Thailand, you know, or any other country? And if our numbers are high in the U.S., I worry that I can't get back into where I need to be. Yeah, it's been interesting just to see globally the impact so yeah but i felt safe here so that's good i'm sure in the news like a lot of people in uh new york city they weren't really following oh. and having a proper lockdown which is a bit upsetting because you know the states is like one of the countries that it's quite big and people look up to them and i don't think like they actually know that other countries look up to them. Yeah, yeah. And that's been frustrating. And I know it's easier in Asian cultures to wear the masks, right? Because that's, you know, just more normal or whatever. And I work at a Japanese school. So, the you know, the thought is I'm wearing this mask for you, you know? And so when the masks aren't being worn because it's my freedoms, that's kind of disheartening because it's, it's a community, it's a collective that we need to be thinking about and not just us. So, I mean, even if there's small percentages, that's still a small percentage that it can prevent something potentially. So, yeah, it's interesting how 
different cultures see different things. Yeah, I, for I, sure. 100%. You mentioned about, uh, you know, your Japanese school and all of that, which leads to my other question, which is, what, what do you do? And what's your favorite thing about your job? Mm. So I'm kind of doing two things. So not only am I teaching English um, to middle school students, so sixth, seventh, and eighth graders, um, like low level English, um, but then I'm also a life purpose and transition coach. So when I went back to the States two years ago, I went back to school to get my coaching certification and so I'm just kind of helping people navigate, like if they're feeling unsettled or they're not sure what to do next, um, you know, figure out with clarity what the next steps are or even exploring how like their giftings, how their talents, you know, how they can use that to serve the world. So that's kind of like the most fun thing I'm doing right now. <laughs> is to encourage and support people in just using all that they have and all that they are to serve the world and so um, I'm doing some of that right now too but I love I mean I've been a teacher for a long time and so I love to be in the classroom and build those relationships with students so I'm kind of like in a happy spot with doing both of those so <laughs> That's really nice. And so that sounds very warming and nice. So is that like a counselor degree or something? The one you took over summer? It sounds like something to do with counseling. Yeah. So it's not. So I always thought after teaching, I would become a counselor. And so at the end of my time in Jakarta, I was really looking, right? Like searching, like I was evaluating my skills, my interests, and all this stuff, like how I'm wired. And so I looked at counseling versus life coaching. And like counseling, you're more going back in time with somebody. Coaching is moving people forward. And I feel like that's, that's what I like to do. That's my sweet spot. Um, and so it's like, okay, this is where we're at. You know, like you are kind of going back a little bit because you're talking about mindsets. Like what, what are your thoughts that aren't helping you right now? Um, and stuff like that. So as a coach, that's kind of what we're doing. We're moving forward. My coaching program was developed, kind of brought on by a counselor. So it had a lot of fundamentals of counseling, um, which I love too. And honestly, I just didn't want to write a ton of papers and go back to school like legit because it'd be like two or three years so yeah so I, I didn't know that that's kind of the difference a life coach and a counselor so I'm learning you today yeah yeah and there's also like in that realm or consultants you'll hear a lot of that so consultants are kind of like telling you how to do things coaches are asking you the empowering questions to get you you know because you have the answers yourself within you, right? Sometimes we just need to be asked the question for it to come out. Um, so that's, that's why I like life coaching, because it's like not me telling you what to do, because what might, what works for me probably won't work for you. So it's like, what works for you? Let's figure that out and build from there. So it is, it is work, but it's fun work, you know, self-growth and challenging stuff so you know what i'm gonna quote that on my phone um you have the answer in you i think that's really powerful it is because i mean so many times especially in culture today we look to the experts right and yeah there are teachers and there's people that we can learn from all the time but then we have to take that information and see if it fits for us you know, like we can't just be a copycat of somebody else because we're not somebody else. We're our own person with our own experiences, our own way of thinking, our own values. And so, yeah, I feel like you have the answers. Just need some digging to get there sometimes. So, yeah. So trust yourself. 
So powerful. So, Ms. Marie, what are some things you wish you had tried before having, or you didn't? Mm, like anything? Yeah, anything. Like, okay. So, surfing is one. <laughs> You know, like I've always had opportunities to learn, like I lived in California for a while or even just, you know, going to Bali, you could always take lessons and I just never did. Maybe one day I will. I don't know. We'll see. But that's something. Um, I think another thing is just like being more serious because I've always liked to buy old things and redo them like housewares and stuff, furniture. And I guess I wish I would have taken that more seriously throughout the years because I now I'm curious where would that have gone? What could I do with that? And, you know, there's still potential to do that. So that's something that's always been an interest. So I wish I would have dug in more and not overthink, you know, overthink it, just do it. So, yeah, that's cool. So what do you mean by like taking stuff and then rebuilding it? That's kind of cool. So um, like furniture, so like from a garage sale, from an estate sale or an antique shop. And so just maybe finding something and giving it a new paint job or fixing it up and repurposing it some way, that kind of stuff. I love finding old stuff and figuring, like bringing new life to it instead of always buying something brand new so okay we stand that okay eco-friendly products right there yep yeah I mean there's so much out there that can be reused and not thrown away so yeah so that's I, what I would like to spend more time doing I agree I think we can save um the world from scarcity by doing that so um what are the things you have learned in the past which build you up to the person you are today? Mm. Things I've learned, I think empathy is something huge that has helped me. Um, I really had, like, I mean, even from my time teaching in the U.S., like, I was always a teacher in a low-income school, right? So very different from how I grew up. But just seeing that we're still people and we're still the same. And then after Jakarta, when I went home, I worked with um, like within the foster care system and which also introduced me to the homeless population um, that I really had no exposure to, you know, but then I have and just my empathy muscles grew quite a bit. So. <laughs> Um, so I think I feel like that's one thing that the sooner we get that muscle built, the better for everybody, not just for us, but everybody in the world. Because then if we can kind of understand where somebody else is coming from, then I think it softens our hearts and makes us a lot kinder and less judgmental, potentially. I mean, you would hope, right? <laughs> when when we realize like that could be us, you know, instead of looking down on somebody for some situation, that could very easily be us if we made different decisions, you know, and everybody, no matter what situation they're in is doing the best they can. I'm thankful for the time that I could grow that a lot more. So I think that's kind of helped me now as I see the world and different cultures and stuff like that, so. I really like your answer. I think it's, I feel like whenever I talk to you, I feel like you get something new, which is actually really good. I think I agree with what you said, especially when you said, like, it decreases argument in a way, and it, um, like, learning to be able to understand other people's perspective is definitely a big thing that um, youths like me should learn how to because I feel like often we tend to have this charisma of being known and being noticed and having to be heard. But I feel like 
being able to step back and listen to other people is also something that I myself have to learn and I'm, I'm sure a lot of you should work on. So that's a very good point. Thank you, Ms. Naomi. But I think it's like, can we have that balance of using our voice, right? If we're passionate about something, but using it to also serve somebody else that maybe has been overlooked or for whatever reason, right? That their voice isn't being heard as loud as maybe somebody else's could. So how can we use it to help others, you know? So, but we have to think of others, <laughs> you know? And so that, that, that's a struggle, right? Cause we're humans and we want to take care of ourselves first, which there is a time and a place for that, but also how can we look to the community and how can we work together? Oh, I think you're ready to have your own class about empathy and um, like being a better person type of group. <laughs> it's been coming a lot up a lot. So yeah, I've been toying with a lot of things that I could, you know, get out into the world and, you know, just see what happens. So that's really nice. So let's move on the serious topics. I want to ask you, um, I know that you are a big traveler, like you like to visit places and learn about culture. So after Corona, hopefully you will be able to travel. Uh, where would you want to go? Um, besides more places in Bangkok or Thailand, I want to get out of Bangkok, <laughs> finally. Um, it's been too long. Um, my brother is currently stationed in Jordan, so I would love to go over there and just see what that's all about. Um, like, just being over in that area, like Egypt, and it's always it's on my bucket list. Um, but I don't know, like with everything going on in the States, I'm also homesick, which is interesting. So just going home and traveling around the states to the places I haven't been yet sounds pretty exciting and getting up to Canada to see Miss Joe and everybody. <laughs> so. You know what's funny? I was kind of thinking I put you and Miss Joe in one podcast, but I was so nervous that like if you guys haven't talked in ages and it's like clashy. So it was such sweet times and memories that um, I'm so thankful for. Like just that paths crossed, you know? So, sweet time. So, Miss Naomi, uh, just to kind of wrap up this session of um, advice and um, empathy and all of that, what do you think is one piece of advice that you would give to the younger youths and to keep in mind to do better in life? I think young, old, whatever, right? Like any age, I think it's, it's the courage to show up as yourself, right? And show up um, and share what you have to give, right? Like I'm many moons down from you, like as far as age, and I'm still dealing with it, right? And so I think it's a constant thing that we have to keep coming back to and mustering up that courage and the confidence to share and serve. And so I think that's what I would encourage everybody to do is to show up, you know, do your thing, do what you are made to do um, boldly, confidently, you know, and just because it's like you got to shine your light to make the world bright. And if we're not, you know, then it's, it's not as bright and everybody likes brightness, right? <laughs> Sunshine. And so I think it's just learning to do that sooner than later and not to let maybe age be a deterrent. You know, if that is an issue for somebody like, oh, I'm too young. Who's going to listen to me? Well, start speaking. Somebody will, you know, and that's how we also um, hone our craft, right? 
So it's like, if you have a voice, you got to practice it to get better. And so um, just show up and do it. So anything that, you know, you kind of have on your heart and wondering about, just go try it, do it, see what happens. Because I feel like just looking back on my life, everything that I've done has led into and helped the next thing. So even though it might seem random, like a degree you got or a situation that you've been in, it will help. Like it grows off of each other. And so I don't think anything is wasted. So there's lessons in everything that we can take from what we experience and what we go through. So, yeah. So show up. That's a, that's a very long advice. <laughs> it's show up. <laughs> Shortened version, show up. <laughs> so. I have a following question. Actually, this is very interesting. Because you said like mm-hmm. um, being a life coach is about like going forward and not really, um, well, it's kind of looking back, but not necessarily looking back to your past. I have a question. What, what advice would you give people that say, so how do I kill my old mindset and start rebuilding a new one? What would you say to that? Well, find out what, what you're thinking isn't serving you right now, right? And then change, change, that, change the thought. Um, and so that takes time, that takes effort, that takes focus, but it can happen over time, you know? And so it's knowing what's not serving you anymore and putting the new script in, right? So, um, and some of those scripts are hard, hard to get rid of or to redo, but it is possible, you know? Um, So I think the sooner you figure those out, the better, because then you can rewrite it and it will get easier. So, yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah. So just start by writing what isn't serving you. And then, you know, draw that arrow. This would serve me better. And start putting that in your thoughts and in your head, even if you need to make index cards for your mirror, you know. So, and as a believer or whatever, you know, whatever you need to do to flip the script so flip the script that's what i would recommend yeah (laughs) yeah so um miss just to kind of um close up today's um episode uh i wanted to ask so like you know you're currently living up life obviously and doing what you love so what are some things that you would recommend um, youth, because mostly my audience are like younger people, what would you recommend mm-hmm. them to start doing to be able to not only like l- like expect something of themselves, but also kind of achieve that um, potential in them? So what, what would you recommend to start doing other than dreaming and doing little things? It's such a fun time right now like especially you moving into the college years and new experiences that way, Um, meeting new people, maybe moving away from home for the first time. And so just like all those things, I would say just take it all in. And, and, but also don't do anything that doesn't feel right to you. Don't go along with the crowd just, just because well, in college, you're supposed to do this. No, you don't have to, you know, it's, I don't know who started those lies, like college, that's just normal that you do that in college. It's not, you don't have to, if you don't want to. So be true to yourself. Don't give in to peer pressure. Um, And like, if you're not sure where you're going, just take that next step of where you think you want to go, you know, and that's all life is just this one step at a time, figuring out what the next right thing is for you. And, um, like, and I know, you know, sometimes there's family pressures. And so 
trying to navigate that can be challenging sometimes. And so really figuring out where can you step out on your own? You know, like if you're really feeling called to something, being courageous and saying that. And maybe it is getting a degree that you're like, how's this going to fit into my dream? But it will. You know, nothing's wasted. Like you can use most anything to get to where you want to go. And so just the learning process is one, you're already one step ahead. So I don't know if that answers your question, but just you do you. <laughs> don't give in to peer pressure and just, just take the next step that you feel is right. And it will come together. You know, it can be very overwhelming. When I got out of college, I kind of thought I knew what I wanted to do. Like I did not want to be a teacher. That was the last thing I wanted to do. And two years out of college, what did I become? A teacher. <laughs> so, and it, I've had beautiful years doing that, you know, but um, it kind of all ties in together. So don't give up hope if you're getting a degree that you're not keen on just yet. <laughs> just keep pushing through. It'll all come together. Amen. So, Amen. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so um that's actually all the time we've got for today um or else the podcast will be way too long and i'm gonna be stressed out <laughs> so yeah um, thank you so much miss naomi for being in my podcast today i wish you all the best in bangkok and i just wish that corona is gonna end and so yeah wow. um see you guys in my next episode bye Come make me.